diseases of rice and their management. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain the causes and symptoms of diseases in rice crop. Explain the management of diseases in rice crop. Do you know more than 250 million farmers cultivate rice in Asia? Over the past three decades, the production of rice has increased by 2.5% every year for meeting the growing food demands. However, a study conducted by the International Rice Research Institute, that is IRRI, revealed that on an average, farmers across the world lose 37% of their rice yield due to pests and diseases. Most of the diseases in rice are caused by several organisms such as bacteria, fungi and viruses. This lesson briefly describes the most commonly occurring rice diseases in the Asian continent. Fungal diseases Approximately, there are more than 40 fungal diseases of rice. They may be either soil bone or seed bone or airborne. Here comes the description of the most commonly occurring fungal diseases of rice plant. Blast disease The blast is caused by the fungus, Magna Porthegria. The fungus infects the plant and produces lesions on all parts including leaves, leaf collar, nodes, stem, panicle and grains. Usually the leaf sheath and the roots are left unaffected. Based on the location of infection, the disease is described as leaf blast. It occurs between the seedling and late tillering stage. When the fungus attacks a young leaf, purple spots are formed initially. Later, the spots enlarge into a spindle shape with grey or white center, surrounded by purple to brown colored borders followed by the appearance of the yellow zone. The appearance of brown spots is observed only on older leaves. Neck rot and panicle blast. When younger neck nodes are infected, the formed triangular lesions extend around the neck, causing damage to the panicle. The affected panicles change to white in color, and when the infection prolongs, it may break and fall to the ground. Collar rot. Infection at the collar occurs at the junction of the leaf blade and sheath, leading to the formation of the brown lesion. In extreme cases, the entire leaf may be killed. Node Blast Lesions appear on the stem nodes, changing the color of the rice tissue from brown to black. Culms and leaves at the infected node turn straw-colored and finally fall off. Rice blast in rice crops can be managed by segregating healthy seeds from deceased crop and sowing them as resistant varieties. By following recommended spacing during planting, that is 20 into 20 cm to enhance aeration and light penetration. By applying recommended levels of fertilizers because excessive usage can increase the intensity of blast infection. By maintaining clean fields which can be the sources of infection by burning or burying of deceased plant, sheath blight. This is caused by the fungus Rhizoctonia solane cune. This fungus is capable of surviving in the soil as sclerotia or dormant mycelium during unfavorable condition, even for two years. Later, the sclerotia in the soil are activated during land preparation or upon frequent irrigation of land. Under favorable conditions, the hyphae or sclerotia attach to the seedling and begin to germinate. The sheath blight disease may cause a significant yield loss of about 10 to 50 percent. Symptoms of sheath blight Initially, oval or ellipsoidal greenish gray lesions measuring 1 to 3 cm in length appears on the leaf sheath close to the soil or stagnant water. Later, 
The lesions enlarge turning into grayish white centers surrounded by dark brown margins. Gradually, the lesions increase and spread to the upper part of the sheath and to the leaves. Finally, killing the entire plant, the infection spreads easily to neighboring tillers when they come in contact with the infected leaves. Sheath blight can be controlled by growing more tolerant rice varieties, by avoiding the use of infected seeds, by treating the seeds with fungicide before sowing, by adopting cultural practices like wide space sowing, control of weeds in and around rice fields, and burning of stubbles, by avoiding the excess use of nitrogen fertilizers, by practicing the concept of green manuring during land preparation, by draining the water from the rice field early in the cropping season, that is, during the sheath formation, so as to control the spread of epidemics, adopting crop rotation with dicot crops, as the fungus spreads easily in monocot crops, false smut. This disease is caused by the fungus, Erstilla genodia virens. The symptoms are visible only at the flowering stage. The fungus attacks the young ovary of an individual spikelet and converts it into large velvety balls or smut ball. Low temperature, high relative humidity and rainfall during the flowering stage increases the incidence of viral infection. Symptoms of false smut Initially, the smut ball is yellow in color and coated by a membrane. After bursting of the membrane, the color changes to yellowish-green, olive-green and at the end turns greenish-black. False smut can be managed by avoiding the sowing of infected seeds, by proper planning of sowing date to avoid the damage caused during the heading period, by spraying of chlorothalonil 75WP at the rate of 2 ml per liter during flowering stage, by cleaning the buns and fields regularly to avoid disease transmission through weeds, by removing the infected panicles and plant debris after harvesting. Brown spot. It is caused by the fungus Cochleobolus miabinus, which is formerly known as Helminthosporium oryzae. The fungus affects the plant in all stages of growth, that is, from seedling to the final stage. When a diseased seed is sown, the spores enter the coleoptile and the roots. When the plant grows, the spores develop on the leaf forming spots. The spots may vary in shape and size, that is, from minute dark spots to large oval or circular spots. These spores spread to other leaves and panicles through the wind. The incidence of disease is more in places with temperature ranging between 16 and 36 degrees Celsius and with a relative humidity of 86 to 100 percent. The infection is critical at maximum tillering until the ripening stage of the crop. Symptoms of brown spot At the seedling stage, Circular yellow or brown lesions appear on the coleoptile. At the tillering stage, initially small, circular brown to purple brown lesions appear on the leaves. The fully developed lesions are mostly circular to oval shaped with light brown to gray center which is surrounded by reddish brown margin. In some cases, the lesions are 5 to 14 mm long causing the leaves to wilt. Dark brown to black oval spots are visible on infected glooms and panicles. When the florets are infected, the grain quality decreases due to incomplete grain filling. The fungi may also penetrate into the grains causing spotting and discoloration of grains, a condition referred as pecky rice. Brown spots can be managed by improving the soil fertility through regular monitoring of soil nutrients and by applying fertilizers. By sowing the seeds of resistant varieties so as to reduce the loss caused by infections. By treating the seeds with fungicides such as propiconazole, trifloxystrobin, carbindazem and iprodion. By treating the seeds for 10 to 12 minutes in hot water at 53 to 54 degrees Celsius before planting to control the primary infection 
that may occur at the seedling stage. Grain discoloration. Rice grain discoloration is a serious disease caused by wide range of microorganisms such as Drescleda oryzae, Carvularia lunata, Sarocladium oryzae, Forma species, Microdochium species, Negrospora species, and Eusarium species. The grains are subjected to infection either after milk stage or after harvest or during the process of storage. The infection may occur externally on the glooms or internally on the kernels resulting in discoloration of the glooms or kernels. Symptoms of grain discoloration Darkening of glooms or spikelets to brown or black in color. Appearance of dark brown or black spots on the grains. Grain discoloration can be prevented by spraying carbondazim, thyrum and mancozerb at 1 is to 1 is to 1 ratio during the middle of the flowering stage. So far we have learnt about the fungal infections in rice. Now let us move on to the bacterial infections. Bacterial diseases are deemed to be a major threat to sustainable productivity. They are found to cause many problems in Asian countries especially in India. Here we shall discuss on one of the major bacterial diseases that causes major loss in the productivity. Bacterial blight disease is caused by the bacterium Xanthomonas oryzae pathover PV oryza. The organisms enter the plant through the pores of the leaves and roots. They multiply inside the plant and enters the leaf veins as well as block the water conducting tissues of the roots. After the appearance of the initial lesion, the bacteria ooze and spread to other plants through rain or wind. An atmospheric temperature of 25 to 34 degrees Celsius and relative humidity above 70% is considered desirable for the growth of these bacteria. Usually, the loss of yield is anticipated to be over 60% when the crops are affected by bacterial blight. At the initial stage of infection, we can notice water-soaked streak appearing near the leaf tip and margins. Gradually, it transforms into yellow and straw-colored stripe with wavy edges. At the creasec phase, the leaves turn grayish-green, wilt, roll up and later wither. Finally, the entire plant will dry or die. Bacterial blight can be managed by growing resistant varieties that can withstand the infection of bacteria. By collecting seeds from disease-free crops and disinfecting the seeds before sowing. By adjusting the time of sowing and transplantation to avoid rainfall during tillery. By avoiding transplantation of saplings in waterlogged areas that are susceptible to flooding. By employing shallow irrigation which can help in minimizing the spread of bacteria. By using the appropriate dosage of fertilizers containing nitrogen and potassium. By maintaining field sanitation through the removal of infected straw and chaff that act as carriers of disease. By burning the previously infected crop residues without leaving them in the field. Let us now learn about the effects of viruses on rice crop. Viral disease is yet again a serious threat to rice cultivation in Southeast Asia. Here we shall focus one of the most virulent types, the rice tongue road disease. This disease is caused by two viruses, namely rice tongue row bacillus form virus, that is RTBV, and rice tongue row spherical virus, that is RTSV. These viruses are transmitted from an infected plant to a healthy plant by green leaf hoppers. A hopper which feeds on an infected plant for 30 minutes acquires this virus and when the same insect feeds on a healthy plant for 15 minutes, the virus gets transmitted to the healthy plant causing infection. After acquiring, the hopper can instantly transfer the virus in 2 hours or within 5 days. Basically, the virus is no longer virulent after 5 days unless the insect reacquires the virus. Symptoms of Rice Tongue Road Disease The infected plants show stunted or reduced tillering. The leaves turn yellow 
or orange yellowish in color and may also develop rust colored spots. The discoloration starts from the leaf tip and extends down to the blade and to the lower portion of the leaf. Infected plant delays flowering and the panicles formed are small and unfilled or may have discolored grains. These viruses can affect the rice plant at any growth stage, particularly during the vegetative stage. The rice tangro disease is well managed. By cultivating resistant varieties, which is resistant to tangro virus or leaf hopper, for example, IR36, IR50, etc. By observing the fallow period for one month, that is, leaving the land unseeded after ploughing and tilling to monitor the spread of vectors in that area. By following crop rotation in the field, which is susceptible to infection. By settling up light traps to attract the leaf hoppers and to reduce their population, by applying the insecticides and fertilizers, by clearing the infected stubbles after harvest to destroy the eggs of leaf hoppers. Summary Let us recap what we have learned. Bacterial leaf blight is the most commonly occurring bacterial diseases of rice. Rice tangro disease caused by tangro virus is frequently encountered in different agroclimatic regions. Cultivating resistant rice varieties can help in controlling the diseases commonly affecting the rice